Live from Tampa Bay Streaming News Leader, this is ABC Action News, taking action for you. All new at 6, our I-Team has been digging into ongoing operations to crack down on human and sex trafficking in Tampa Bay. Tonight on the heels of the Super Bowl in a full circle report. The concerns being raised about a disconnect between who the operations aim to help and who they hurt. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jamison Euler. And I'm Isabel Rosales. Wendy is on assignment tonight. In the weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, our I-Team brought you stories of sex trafficking operations, outreach, and rescues not seen anywhere else. In tonight's special Full Circle report, I-Team investigator Kylie McGivern reveals new details of who was arrested surrounding the big game and why it matters now. In one of its human trafficking operations leading up to the Super Bowl, Tampa police arrested 46 people. Most were women arrested for prostitution. Tonight, we look at the different viewpoints about who these operations help and hurt. I was trafficked multiple times. I was 16 when it first happened. Sam Wygea Kamar, a survivor, founded the anti-sex trafficking nonprofit Rahab's Daughters in Chicago. I was sold at multiple Super Bowls and other events over time. And so for me, it was really important that we do something about it. A team of Rahab's Daughters volunteers has traveled to the last six Super Bowls, leading up to Tampa's turn in the international spotlight. Last year, the nonprofit launched a local chapter. We asked how the expectation an influx of women and children sold for sex surrounding the big event compared to the reality, the Super Bowl that almost wasn't held in a pandemic. There was much more activity than we thought would happen here this year. Wajia Kumar told us the number of online sex ads she and her team found tripled from last year. We were around about 6,000 ads and this year we were closer 20,000. Ready? Yep. We went inside one of two call centers Rahab's daughter stationed for the Super Bowl. Hi, um, we reached out because we saw an ad online. It was an ad for sex that was posted and it was brought back to this number. Responding to ads. Hi, this is Stephanie. Reaching out to potential victims. We help women and children in difficult situations. The organization reports it made 7,000 calls by hand. So you're born number 40 or 41? The rest of the 20,000 using an automated system. And she's 18 to 24. Mm -hmm. On the phone. Thank you. And on the ground, the team came alongside local outreach, working to connect with anyone who may be in need, providing anything from housing to clothing and food for 40 women so far. The three that law enforcement referred to us so we could um, help them that came out of stings. A Tampa police human trafficking operation, much like this one the I-Team showed you in February, led to the rescue of seven more women, launching federal investigations. Our target going into um, Super Bowl was to make as many contacts with females as possible. Those who identified as sex trafficking victims were provided safe housing and services. Those who did not were arrested. Targeting those uh, escort ads, um, prostitution ads, which would give us a bigger population of prostitution arrests as well. And it did. Of the 46 arrests, we found 40 were women. When there were that many women arrested for prostitution, why were there not just as many buyers arrested? That wasn't our main focus for this operation. We were going after potential traffickers and to rescue any girls. In this undercover operation, a Washington state man was arrested at a Tampa hotel and charged with human trafficking. Patrick Lee Thomas. A police report obtained by the I-Team reveals the victim had an active restraining order against Thomas for domestic violence. The victim told police she came to Tampa for the Super Bowl. The report goes on to say the victim stated that she did not want to have sex with the men and that Thomas would take the money. Detective Andrea Hughes says TPD is hearing that some of the women arrested for prostitution are now coming forward as sex trafficking victims. At that time, there may be a sense of fear. Overall, I think the operation was a success. Following up with Rahab's daughters, YJ Kumar told the I team, I hope we can continue to partner with law enforcement to have zero arrests for prostitution and all arrests for the buyers or traffickers. University of South Florida professor Jill McCracken sees the arrests as a further problem rather than a solution. So we have these stings that are created and we find that the majority of people are women who are arrested for prostitution. 
McCracken is the co-founder of Sex Workers Outreach Project, Swap Behind Bars, a nonprofit serving people impacted by the laws against prostitution. The group is critical of what it calls the hype surrounding sex trafficking and big events like the Super Bowl. We decided to go to Tampa Bay and bail people out because we knew they were going to get arrested. And we believe that one of the victims that was arrest arrested was a victim of trafficking. Of the 73 people the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office arrested in its human trafficking operation, most were men seeking to buy sex. Three were charged with human trafficking, 23 were women charged with prostitution. What's lost in all of this is the people who are harmed by these operations. And primarily these are the women who are just trying to make ends meet and then we go after them in this criminal way. And I think it's incredibly problematic. TPD defends its operation, saying more women are now coming forward for new investigations. And that's the ultimate goal is to be able to provide services and the opportunity for outreach and to be able to talk for potentially them coming forward at a later date. Law enforcement agencies want to make it clear these human trafficking operations are not just isolated to big events. If you believe you or someone you know may be a victim of human trafficking, we have a list of resources on our website, abcactionnews.com, to get help. I'm IT team investigator Kylie McGivern, taking action for you.